story, you go out, browse for it on that network drive, bring it in, boom, apply it. And the nice thing is, is that this will soon become part of your custom ones that you can use, uh, that you can then have in your often used themes. And then you can just apply it to your document, and now you know that you're not going to get in trouble with your bosses or the graphic guys because, hey, look guys, I'm using your theme, this is the way you want it to look and feel, and you should be good to go. So that's what themes allow us to do. Now to create other custom things, you can say, well, I want to create a new theme color. You know, cause which, which I already did by adding certain things. Now, by clicking this, it'll just say, okay, what kind of themes? And you can change everything from the backgrounds to the accent colors, all those things, followed hyperlink. And then you can create this as a new theme color, which you can then bring in to an overall theme. Just remember, the theme will have a theme color, it will have the text or the fonts, and it will have the effects. So you can then rename these. So you don't have to create a whole new super theme, you can just create theme colors. So we'll cancel that. Same thing here with our, our built-in here. We, here's our all of our uh, fonts. Or you can create a new theme font. And what's the new theme font? Well, what's the heading? What's the body? And so you can create the new one. I could say, well, I want Broadway to be the heading, and the body font I really like is uh, Arial. So I'll come up here, and I'll click Arial. So I'll call this Broadway, and then I click Save, and now this is now one of my, theme, my font, font themes, Broadway. See, it's got Broadway and Arial. Now, of course, I can include three of these things together and create a brand new overall theme to use for my document. So a lot of granularity here, folks, for you to use when you are creating your documents. A lot of cool things for you guys to chew on now with, that you take a look at our page formatting part two. First off, hey, you want a different color on that page? You want a, a papyri or a paper bag or a fish thing in the background on your page? Not a problem. Change the page backgrounds and colors. Hey, you want to add a border? You want some musical notes? Or do you want a, a fish going around it? Not a problem. Do you want a, you know, a border, just a box or a shadowed effect? You can do that. We also have watermarks. These are good for when you want to add something like ASAP or urgent or maybe a, a little watermark of your logo behind. That'll appear on both the online, if you use an online version or a printed document. Watermarks are good for that. Headers and footers. You know, sometimes we want information at the top of the page to always appear there. Maybe the uh, name of the company. Maybe uh, the page number. Or maybe you want that at the bottom of every page. Well, then that's what a footer is for. And you can set these up. Don't forget, section by section. You can make different changes for each one. Then, of course, we left off with themes. Very powerful feature that enables you to enhance the look of your document with colors, fonts, and effects that, you know, have a certain feeling or tone. And you can apply that theme to the entire document, which is kind of neat. So just to kind of show you how we can utilize these, our pages don't just need to be boring black and white text or even just some pictures. You can change the entire page with page formatting. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 Tables. Now, I know once you start looking at this, you might think that you're back in the Excel 2007 or 2003 series, but really what we're talking about is taking data, text, graphics, whatever it is, and putting it into an organized structure, a table. We know that there's a lot of different things we can do with tables, especially if you have any experience with Microsoft's Excel 2007 or any of the versions of Excel. But here we're going to start off with a basic tabular list that kind of makes a little small table just using tabs. We're going to then show the different ways of inserting a table, whether you do it with just the standard click and drag or a drawing method. Modifying the structure, hey, do you want more columns, do you want more rows, how do you want them to fit together, and then modifying the design. I mean, things like shading and the borders and the things like that. You can adjust those. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how we can just take plain old text that's sitting somewhere, whether it's in Notepad or here in Word, and we can convert it into a table. So let's get started with these tables. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up my Acme second quarter report for my Acme Musical Instruments company. And let's say I've got my information I've typed in. I've done a little bit of, you know, some headers here for that and headings. And now I'm going to come down here to sales number. And I want to present my sales data into a table, let's say. Now, if you only have a small amount of data, 
that you're going to try to put on a table, one of the things you might choose to do is put it in what is known as a tabular list. And all that does is it takes the text and puts it into simple columns utilizing a left, right, or centered uh, tab stops. You can also use those decimal tab stops. Uh, not so much with the bar tab stops. Now if you want to find out more about tabs and you've kind of fast forwarded to this nugget video, don't forget, just go back to where we talk about our tabs and columns and you'll see that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now what I mean by creating a tabular list, it says that we can have adequate sales across all four regions. So what I might want to do is put in year right there and then I'm going to hit tab and then I'm going to put north for one of my titles for my columns south, east, and west. Okay, so I went ahead and, and I just basically I'm hitting the tab key, but you'll notice they're not real even here. There's a little bit based on where the, exactly the tab stops there, because it's going to come over here and say, up oh, north here and then tab here. I can see this again by just simply clicking the show hide, but notice I've only got one tab between each one of these. So there's you know nothing really going on right here, just tabs going between the two. So we can go ahead and we'll turn this off. And just because I added a space here and a space there, notice how it changes everything. Well, we can fix that. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say the year will be 2007. And I'll hit tab. And then I'll type in maybe 265 for north. Hit tab. We'll say uh, 467 for south. East will have 234. We'll actually give it a name because remember we had that uh, tremendous increase in sales up here in the east region, so we'll do that. And then west, we're going to go ahead and say that we had over 10,000. Okay, so that's uh, actually 100,000, so let's uh, get rid of one of those zeros. Okay, 10,123 uh, sales. Wow, that's pretty good. So that's for 2007. So I'll go ahead and hit Enter. I'll go to the next line, and we'll say this is 2008. I'm going to go ahead and type in. I'm just hitting the tab, by the way, and I'm just going to run in some quick numbers here for each one of these. And we'll finish up with 9087. So now I've got different sizes right here and I've got all this set up. So this is going to kind of show how this tabular list works. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is go ahead and set up a nice little heading because you got year, north, south. This is kind of my head headings for my table so I'm going to highlight it. I'm just going to do something real simple. I'm going to just turn it all to bold. Okay, so we'll go ahead and bold that. Now another thing you might want to do is notice how this is all lined up here. Maybe I want to move it out a little bit to kind of separate this because that's what a table kind of helps do. It kind of draws your eye to the information and lines it up. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the indent. Now remember, that's going to increase this all the way over just a little bit. And so I'll go ahead and I can do it. Now I lost my little mini toolbar. I'm going to come up here and increase the indent by selecting all of this, clicking here, or coming up here, click here, and I'm just going to increase it out here. Now, of course, that looks a little funny. It's not all lined up. It's not all set uh, to uh, correctly. Now, one of the things I'm going to want to also do is make sure that I set the, the paragraph spacing before and after to zero. So that way it kind of outlines and this kind of creates almost like a box around the text that I have. And it's going to make it look nice and simple. So I highlight all of this, come up to my paragraph setting, and what I'm going to want to do is make sure that my spacing is before is zero and after is zero. So I went ahead and did that. That looks good. And it was set up that way. But if I didn't, if I had something like something different afterwards, maybe to 12 or 15 after or 1, I can change it here. So we go ahead and we click OK. Looks good. I always want to make sure that happens because otherwise all the text underneath kind of changes and it looks weird. So we're going to go ahead and come in and say we want this to have be like a tabular list. So what do we got to do? Well, now we have to set the tabs in order to create this tab list. So now I'm going to come up here and set some left tab stops in order to set north and south and east so that way they line up evenly on the on the ruler here and to make sure that they all line up and look good down below. Because right now you kind of got numbers over here and there and it's kind of like pushed together. It doesn't look all that great, right? By the way, if you wonder why every time I roll over here I get this little smart tag, 
Two six five four six seven two three four five looks like a telephone number, doesn't it? So if you want to get rid of that, you just come over here and say remove that smart tag and it'll go away. And just a little tip there, even in the middle of the tables, we're talking about the smart tags. Okay, so we come up here and we say I want to, let's say I want to go ahead and put one a left stop right here. So I come up here, click, and it adds that left tab stop, gets rid of any of the default tabs from the left of this. Then I'm going to go over here and we'll just do an inch across. So I'll add another one here, add another one here, and then let's go ahead and see what happens when we add another one here. Now if you notice, what this has done is it's kind of moved things out and because we have the larger numbers here, it looks a little funny. So what I might want to do is go ahead and remove that tab stop and instead put a right tab stop because this is what it does. Remember we want to create almost like a a little uh, tabular list and we almost want it to be like a little table. So what I want to do is add the other right corner to this table. Makes sense, right? So now if I come up here and I click um, somewhere here. Now look at that. Now it kind of backs up the numbers so that it backs up to the west and then I can just move if I'm like, ooh, that looks good, but let me move it over here. Maybe this will look a, better, a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. And So we adjust it and now my table or my tabular sets are going to make it look like I have a little table here. So if I click off of it, it'll say, aha, there it is. And if I turn on my, of course, my uh, paragraph and formatting markers, I can see that here I have my tabs all set correctly. So that way everything lines up nice and pretty. Okay, so that, you know, that works, I guess, if, if you want to use that. But that's usually when you're using a small amount of data. Now, if you wanted to, of course, to create a table is actually fairly simple here in Word 2007. And the way that you do that is, uh, let's say we want to all hit enter a couple of times, and we'll insert a table down here um, set up for this. So all I need to do is come up here to the Insert tab, and look what's right there, Table. And this is real, real simple. All you do is you click down and you can either create one by just merely coming down here and selecting how many rows you want, how many columns. So I can say I want one column, two columns, three columns, and then how many rows? One, two, three, four. So we can do that. Well, if I got year and north, south, east, and west, so that's year, north, south, east, west, I go, oh, okay, I need five columns. And then how many rows? Well, let's do a couple of uh, a, a year. So uh, you can do a couple of years. And, so, and then all you have to do is click and bada bing bada boom there it is it's created and once again because we've inserted something new and we have something that we can actually play around with we have the table tools appear with both design and layout now that's one way of creating a table I'll go ahead and undo that another way that you can do it under insert is using the draw method now with this you can click down and you can also click insert table by the way but also draw table insert table brings up the dialog box where you can put in the number of columns the number of rows do you want fixed column width do you want to make some formatting here before you do it auto fit to the contents auto fit to the window size of what it is and then even remember the dimensions for any new tables we can do that but the one I wanted to show you was the draw so if you click down here and you click draw this is going to allow you a little bit more freedom in how you want to create create a table. So if I click the draw and then I scroll down here, all I do is I draw, see how wide I want the table. And what's going to happen is as soon as I release this, you got it. I've got I've drawn one single cell of a table. Now what I can do obviously if I want to add more rows and do everything else, I click on the layout and here's where you insert rows and columns to the right, to the left, below, insert above, and then that will produce um, a different one. But if you want to just create your own drawing, and you know, and then I can draw my own table like this, I can create my own table by using the drawing tool here, where all of a sudden now, guess what? I've got this row and four columns, so I can draw something if I want as well. It's, it's kind of neat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, zip back out of this and undo all that. And let's go see the, the standard way. I usually come in here, click insert, and then we click on table, and I'll say year, north, south, east, west, and we'll do a couple of years. I click it, 
boom, there it is, and it's set up. Now we can do a couple of things. First off, let's take a look at the layout of the table itself. How do we change the way the, the, the literal structure of the table? Well, here is where we're able to come in and do things from like whether I want to change